it's uh, 40 days after planting and so we're pretty much at the end of uh, tillering, getting close or may have reached already in the hybrid uh, barnacle initiation stage. So what we're going to do today is take a quick look at uh, the overall situation, how successful have we been with establishing the crop, the vegetative growth uh, and then uh, decide uh, some of the things that we need to do next. So Lee, uh, when you look at this, uh, left and right for me, so here is the hybrid, here is the inbred. Do you see any differences? Do you think in general we have a reasonable looking crop here? Um, first I might just, just reflect on where we were a week ago. I was agonizing over the space between the plants. Now that space is starting to be covered over. We have had a week of fairly sunny, fairly warm weather and it's, it's improving a lot. So, um, putting on that nitrogen fertilizer on uh, a week ago is starting to have, a, have an effect now. The nitrogen would have been absorbed and, and metabolized by now. And it's starting to look a lot better. I mean, this is of course a, a, a totally representative plant sample <laughs> that we've pulled here, which may be a little bit exaggerated, but uh, you can see, at least visually, uh, the hybrid seems to be more vigorous and taller already at this stage than the inbred. Yeah. It's pretty clear, isn't it? Yeah? yeah. But you did point out that the hybrid is a slightly shorter season variety. Is it is correct? about a week earlier, so it, it's expected to be a, a, a bit ahead already. But part of that is probably hybrid vigor. And what I notice here is, uh, I don't know if you can see that easily, but uh, it really has uh, very strong stems already here. Whereas the inbred uh, stems uh, uh, seem to be a bit weak already at this point. Yeah. You can see that? Yeah. Now, whether that's just uh, hybrid vigor or whether it's part of the reason, why well, part of the reason is that it's ahead a few days. But generally speaking, you can see planted on the same day, quite a difference in, in vegetative growth development. And when you look at the, the whole field, you can see difference uh, this strip over here divided here hybrid in the inbred and you can see that for the whole field you, know. you have here an example of, of quite a large space yeah. between the seedlings uh, where the machine was driven a little bit wide from one pass to the other I'm quite sure Akim was driving the machine when this happened no 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 way that must have been one of yours eh? that is uh, more, that's more than half a meter I would say look at it all over so, the shop you know, not much we can do, it's just too wide spacing uh, and yeah. Now let's look over another field here which has been planted by hand on the side here. That'll make you see the difference. We've got here a typically manually transplanted rice field in a research station I want to point out. Yeah. So people are using a string and to basically create a, a square grid. You know, and then people are really planting it very carefully. You can see you know, if I would take a ruler, you know, this is 20 by 20 plus minus one centimeter. Yeah. So this is perfect plant spacing. Yeah, I want to introduce here James Kilty. He is a postdoc here at Erie working in the ecological intensification research group. And they've done things a little bit different in terms of using a mechanical planter, um, at least from the Outside it looks that they've been a bit more successful in getting a more uniform crop established than we did. So James, uh, what, what were the positive and negative lessons that you've learned and what did, what did you actually do here? So this is a zero tillage plot where we've used the mechanical transplanter and we have a residue retained and a residue return. Um, one problem we have with the mechanical transplanter where you have residue is that you may not get soil contact with the seedlings. Um, the, the planter can just drop the seedlings on the top so of the residue. If you say zero till, so you didn't really plough or puddle or muddle anything or nothing? No just cultivation whatsoever. So, so just planted just straight into... Straight onto the soil. We yeah. soaked the soil for three days or five days and then we planted. Well that saves a lot of energy costs, right? Energy, and labor, water, mm -hmm. uh, labour. Um, but what we're finding is that this is using a lot more water than where we've cultivated. So we're applying water here every day. So water percolating it's percolating through the, through the profile. And that's probably because the plough pan isn't as uh, 
as uniform across this as it would be in a puddle plot. And that seems to potentially have introduced rats. So where we have less water, the rats are happier to go into our pots. And we've Jeez. just seen um, rat damage this morning. So, yeah. but, but this technology potentially would be more suited to the wet season when you get the water for free. Yeah. Um, so, but I think the point is that it is possible to do mechanical planting with a very much reduced or even no tillage. Yeah, so we're going to look um, into a reduced tillage next mm -hmm. rather than a zero till to mm -hmm. see if that actually gets us better soil contact because potentially if we are leaving the seedlings on mm -hmm. top, although they look happy, mm -hmm. they may be prone to lodging yeah. later in the season, particularly if the panicles are, are large and the grains are full, basically. Well, great. Keep trying. Now, this looks good to me, so I think it's a lot to learn. Yeah, yeah. thanks. <laughs> we also have the occasional spot with quite a high weed density. Now it might be this area was a little bit higher and the soil has become a little bit drier and the, the efficacy of the herbicide has broken down. That may be possible. Looking at it by eye, I don't think so. What I suspect it is, is a mist patch in the application process. Here at Erie, like many, many places in Asia, herbicides and other pesticides are still applied by hand and when you're waving a single nozzle by hand it is extremely difficult to get good coverage adequate coverage everywhere there will be mist patches there'll be doubled up patches and I suspect what we're looking here is a mist strip the shape of the strip there and there's another one just up ahead I suspect these are patches where the pre-emergent herbicide so what we're going to do what we're going to do about that Mark? Uh, we're going to hand weed these little patches. We could either apply a herbicide in these little patches or hand weed, but they are quite small. Yeah. We could almost be forgiven for ignoring them and walking away, but I think we'll, we'll hand weed them for the sake of the pursuit of perfection, shall I say. So we were very close to panicle initiation stage, so that is when our third fertilizer application needs to go on because the crop really now needs extra nitrogen because it's going to shoot up produce a lot more biomass uh, and the uh, reproductive phase uh, is starting so you can't really afford having a nitrogen deficiency at this point so the nutrient no manager recommendation was to apply the next uh, dose of uh, urea at this stage and so that uh, uh, is going to happen in the next one or two days but to improve the efficiency of the fertilizer so what we're going to do is we're going <coughs> to drain off the standing water we don't have a huge amount of water on there maybe just uh, five centimeters or two inches uh, uh, but we're going to drain that off so that we can apply the urea on the surface let it react a little bit and then maybe a day later uh, irrigate and move it into the soil uh, so that should be the best practice we can use to improve the efficiency of the fertilizer